morning, everybody. Thank you, Thomas. Well done. Good response. Good to see you all uh, this morning. Really nice to see many of you on uh, Friday for the Christmas party. Those of you who were here, we had lots of fun. And uh, yeah, those of you who weren't, we'll have more events and come to those because it was great fun. Lots of uh, good food, good fellowship, some games, some competitive nature coming out in some of the games. So always uh, good. And I think most of us left about 11 o'clock that night. So it was a good, a good party. Um, great to see lots of new faces as well this morning in church. So welcome if you're here for the first time. It's lovely to see you. And uh, yeah, we're coming this morning, of course, to praise and worship the Lord. And what, what more blessed place can we be in to come and be able to do that? What a privilege uh, to be here. As we were praying this morning in the, in the um, prayer room, or the, the lobby in between here and the kitchen, to be more specific. Um, there was sat with a few of us, this, uh, this real presence of the joy of the Lord. And I think this was coming also from uh, what we were seeing Friday and just this, this real spirit of fun and joy as well. And, you know, that joy comes from, it comes from God. It's not something that's our own strength. And how amazing is that, that we don't have to conjure that up. It is, it's something that we come um, to him for. And he gives us, he equips us with that. But also, I just wanted to share from Isaiah as well. Um, and I'll just read a couple of verses here, and then, yeah, we will get started with our praise and worship. But it says, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. And that's symbolizing his strength, his security, his power. And above it stood the, ser- the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth is full of his glory. How incredible is that to imagine and to just visualize that, and the joy that comes with that as well, when we worship him. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So now I see where I am in comparison to him, and I say, I'm not worthy. What can I do? And then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from 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 the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Yes, it's right. We're not clean. We're not there. We're not able to do it of our own strength. Our joy is not there of our own strength. But because of what he has done, because of how he has conquered, because of how he loves us, we are able to come and stand before him. So your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here I am. Send me. I just thought so powerful to come back to that place of remembering that we can choose to step into that place of being sent, but it is about the sanctification that he brings us, not because of our own strength. So as we worship and as we praise this morning, if you feel that joy bubbling, that's his joy. Jump into that. Celebrate. Go a bit crazy if you need to. But let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's worship him because he's good and he's done great things for us. So Lord, as we come this morning before you, Lord, we We lift our hands to you. We worship you, Lord. Lord, we praise you for you are good. Lord, you have done great things, Lord. You are so awesome. Lord, we thank you for the miracle of your birth. We thank you that we're coming up to that time now to celebrate. But Lord, we don't ever take that for granted, Lord. Lord, you have saved us and redeemed us. We worship your name, Lord. Let's stand and and praise him this morning and lift your hands and worship him today.
coming back to the star of God is freedom and here we feel your heart your heart before us take me this is all I can bring you never stop loving us no matter how far we run you never give up on us all of heaven shout let the future begin no matter how far we run you never give up on us all of heaven shout let the future begin
Come on, church, throw up your hands. Throw up your hands in surrender, in adoration. We bless you. I don't know if you realize it or not, church, but God's in the house this morning. His presence, His power, what we've been praying for, what we've been asking for this morning. God is here in this place. God is here in this place. We bless you, King Jesus. We bless you, oh God. Come on, church, lift your voice. Not just lift your hands, lift your voice. Let the overflow of your heart begin to sing and speak and, and shout. Come on, let's bless the Lord at all times. We bless you, King Jesus. We bless you, King Jesus. We bless you, King Jesus. We bless you, O God. We bless you, O God. We bless you, 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 God. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. You've come too far to step back now. Just keep pressing in. Just keep pressing in. Just keep pressing in. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We bless. Church, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Hallelujah! Yes, God! God, this is all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you, God. It's all for you. It's all for you. You You know, church, just as I was worshiping this morning, I couldn't shout any louder. I couldn't jump any higher. But, But in my worship, and I've never done this before, but in my worship, my hands became like a cup as I lifted them towards God. And, and I felt in the Spirit God just say to me, it's time now that your cup overflows. 
And then I was reminded of Psalm 23, that even in the midst of my enemies, my cup still overflows. Even in the midst of my troubles and my difficulties and my Mondays, my cup still overflows. Because the one who provides has an endless source. And he doesn't just fill it to the top. He says, no, it overflows. And I can live a life of overflowing. Not a life of being stagnant or a life of even being full. I'm called to a life that's overflowing. Because I, 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 I get my, my source from the living source, the living waters, the true waters, the waters that will never run dry. And then I felt God just say to me, well, you got to pray it. You got to pray it over the people, Phil. You, you just got to pray it over the people. And so I said, Bridget, this morning, God, God how, how, how am I going to do this? And he says, just get a jug of water and a couple of towels and fill their hands with water. Now I know think if some of you think I'm, I'm a bit crazy. Maybe it's the Irish blood or maybe it's just the obedience because you read through scripture, they did some crazy stuff. They did some crazy stuff. But I believe God, this, God just this morning just wants to bring a freshness of his presence because I believe with all my heart, God's doing something new, something fresh, something we've never experienced before. And I'm in. I'm in. I don't care if God says to me, sleep on one side for 90 days. I'm in. I've come too far. I've surrendered too much of my life. I've given everything I possibly can to him. I'm not coming back anymore. Anybody with me? There's a freshness of the anointing, of the presence of God He wants to release in this place this morning. And I'm asking you the question, you want it? In proper English, would you like it? And I'm going to ask you in a moment to the, come to the front and make that cup shape in your hand and we're going to pour some water into your hands this morning and you know what it's just going to flow through and it's just going to it might make a mess all over my car but I really really don't care because I want you this morning to have everything that you possibly can get of God in this place this morning and I know that's God's heart is that your heart will you take what he's offering Will you take what he's offering? So who's going to be first to leave their chair and just come stand right along the front? Yeah, fight, fight for first position. But God's doing something new and fresh. Come on, leave your chair and just come and make that, 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 that cup shape. Because we're going to pour some water into your hands this morning. And listen, church, I want you to believe. I want you to believe in faith. That God's going to do something and impact your life as this water touches your hands. Do you know why? Because water represents the Holy Spirit. And something's going to flow. Come right across. Come right across. We're going to need another jug of water. Can somebody grab me a jug of like lukewarm water that's not, not too cold, not too hot? Come on, keep coming to the front. Keep coming along here. Come on, come right along the front here. Come right along the front here. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Come on, you guys are sat down. If you still want to come, then you come along. But listen, I'm going to have to go up here because I'm not very tall. I had this conversation this morning. I got blessed with short legs. You guys have come forward. I pray that your faith just expands right now. Your faith grows. There's nothing in the water that we're going to pour in your hands. But there's something in the symbolic nature of what we're doing this morning that when this water touches your, heart, your hands, there's going to be a freshness. 
It's going to be a freshness of the anointing, a freshness of the presence of God that you, maybe you've not experienced before. Is that okay? If God does something in your life this morning you've never experienced, is that all right? Do you trust Him enough? So you guys are forward. Just make that cup shape in your hands. And you just begin to pray. We put a towel below your hands. You just begin to pray. Because you, you're the ones that have come in faith. You've got to have your faith. I got my faith. But you pray. God, let faith, let it grow. Let it grow. Let it expand, Father. I pray as this water is poured into my hands and through my fingers. Father, let the freshness of your presence, let the freshness of your anointing. Lord, whatever I'm going through right now, it doesn't really matter right now. The most important person in the room right now is God. And this is the most important in your life right now is right here. So you keep praying. You keep praying. You keep praying. We're just going to start pouring this water through your hands. You keep praying. You keep praying. You keep praying. You keep praying. Just keep praying. Father, let cup overflow. Let a cup overflow. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Let it overflow in your presence, God. Here it comes. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Just keep praying. Pray in the Spirit. Let it overflow. Don't worry about it. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. It's supposed to make a mess. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. That's it. church pray 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 in Jesus name let it overflow let it overflow let it overflow in Jesus name the mother of many is a calling to be a mother of many in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Flow, let it flow, let it flow. There's a really strong anointing in this corner, guys. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Overflow. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Kila mandra babo kushu kuru darara mandre shikila darara mandre shikila darara mandre in Jesus name yeah get your hand in there mate Kila mandra babo kushu kuru darara mandre shikila darara mandre in Jesus name 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 let it overflow let it overflow just linger in the presence of God Let it overflow, God. Yes, God. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. You see that, Sue? You see that? Look, look at your hands. Look at your hands. You're holding it. No, that's good. You're holding it. Holding the presence. Learn to carry. Learn to carry. In Jesus' name. Yes, God. anointing of the presence of God in Jesus name in Jesus name Open the floodgates of heaven. 
On, church, let's stand. Let's just sing this. Stand with me. Come on, throw up your hands. God has done so much in your lives already this morning. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty-handed, but alive in your Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Just while we're on this attitude of worship, you know, when God turns up, every part of his character comes with him. And we've experienced his freshness, his anointing, and his presence. But also when he turns up, he brings healing with him. And um, I had a prayer request came through for um, little Eloise that we've been praying for over the last couple of years. Well, she's back in hospital and she's very unwell and the doctors just can't find out what's wrong. Um, but my doctor's called um, Abba. And he's a great physician. And he knows. He knows exactly what's wrong. And he knows exactly what to do and he knows exactly how to heal that's why he's the great physician and we're going to take a moment and we're going to pray for her but also this morning if you're in this place you need a touch of healing why don't you just place your hand on the part of your body needs healing if you can't do that and just place your hand over your heart we've seen miracles over these last few months in this place of God touching and healing and the same God that did it yesterday is the same God that can do it today. So place your hand over your heart or over that part of your body that needs healing right now in Jesus' name. But Father, we just bring Eloise to you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, this young child has been through so much already. And we pray that you would give wisdom to the doctors. We pray, God, that they would find out what's going on. And if, Father, if that's not how you choose to answer, then, Father, right now, your word says you sent forth your word and you touched and you healed. And so, Eloise, as you would be in that, in that bed, in that hospital right now, the church together agree that, Father, we send forth your word that you would touch her and that you would heal her in Jesus' name. Father, for her parents, God, we pray right now, would you be the God of all comfort right now? Would you comfort them? God, they've been through so much. They've seen their child through so much pain and so much treatment. We pray right now, God of comfort, would you strengthen them at this time? Would you encourage them at this time? Father, would you increase their faith that, God, what you've done so far, that you will do again, and you will do it again, and you will do it again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray, God, over these next few days that I get an email or a text or a phone call to say that she's home and that she's better, all for your glory and all for your honor. And Father, we pray for those this morning in this place that need a touch of healing. You just begin to pray wherever your hand is. Father, we pray right now. Right now, God, you're healing ears and heads 
and joints. And you're taking away pain right now in Jesus' name. And right now, Father, sleepless nights are no more. Depression is no more. Backache is no more. Whatever it is, speak it out in faith, church. Whatever your condition is, speak it out that God can heal you right now in this place. And we will stand with you. Because we're two or three. Agree together. It shall be done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Where are you, church? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, I can't hear you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the church, let's give God a round of applause. Let's bless him in this place this morning. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Gosh, I love church. I'm on my own. Anybody else love church? <sighs> I'm exhausted. God is so good. You know, you guys that came forward, I thought we'd have two or three people. I thought one jug of water would have been enough. We thought a couple of towels would have been enough. But you guys that were just, you know, feeling the water going through your hands and your fingers, did you feel something changing? Did you feel the presence of God? Can you just wave at me and let me know something was happening? You know, um, there's such a thing called messy church. Have you heard of messy church? And they do church a different way, and maybe they have some food and various other things. I think we just had messy church. I think God's order is different than our order. And how God does things is different how man does things. Because if man was going to do things to see revival, we'd have seen it. But we ain't seen it yet. There's a few of us that are agreeing together. I still believe the greatest revival is still yet to be happening. And you know what, church? We get to play our part. We get to play our part in this. And so it's time to step up. And it's time to roll your sleeves up. Because you have a part to play. And as I was listening to some worship coming down in the car this morning, there was a line that said this. The fact that you're still here means that God's not finished with you yet. And I think I prayed it over a few people this morning. The fact that you're alive and kicking. Just check that person beside you. The fact that you're alive and kicking means God's not finished with you yet. He still has plans and purposes and goals and visions and everything that he's got for you. And it doesn't care how old you are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how young you are. Because as I was praying over somebody here, I can't remember who it was. Little boy was there. Was it, was it you? And he put his hands in his mom's hands in the water. He said, get your hand in there, son. Because anointing's for you also. This is not my sermon, but it seems to be going that way. You would have think you'd have a meeting like this a couple of weeks from Christmas. We're supposed to be around little baby Jesus. And actually, he's not a baby anymore. He's a king enthroned on high. He's the warrior king. He's the lamb that looked like he was slain. But he's victorious. He's not a baby anymore. getting comfortable with the quietness. It's all right. It's all right. I'm just listening in the spirit. I don't want to move on until God says move on. There is a sermon prepared. But three words from God is better than a sermon from your pastor. Sermons are good. They are, aren't they? Please say yes. But a couple of words from God is much more powerful, isn't it?
think 2024 is going to be explosive. And I don't use that language just because I'm from Belfast. In the spirit, I think there's, we've mentioned this many times before, there's a preparation building up to what he wants to do. But before you paint your windowsill, you prepare it for the paint. True? You don't just put it on because it, it won't look good. It, it's, it's not how you do it. Everything is done right. And what God does is decently in order. But his decency and order is different than our decency and order. So when Jesus fed, fed the 5,000 plus, he put them down in groups of 50. There was an organization to what he was doing. And the power was released as he prayed. Are you okay to go through the time of preparation? Apart from Jesus, Paul was probably one of the most smartest people around. You got to be pretty smart and pretty much in tune with God to write most of the New Testament, right? I've been wanting to write a book for the last 20 years. I, I've got the titles of the chapters. And yet, in the relationship that Paul had with God, he writes most of the New Testament. But before he was Paul, he was, and he was like the Pharisee of all Pharisees. He was, he was top of his class. He was the, the guy that all the kids coming through wanted to be like. But then when he meets Jesus on the road to Damascus, something changed. And do you know what happened after his blind eyes were open? He was sent out for another three years to be retrained, to get rid of all the rubbish, all the religion, everything that he had learned and strived to be was taken away. And he was reborn in the spirit of God in order to do everything that God called him to do. If you're an apprentice, how long does it take to qualify? Three years, four years? When I started my minister in training, it took me almost four years to get my ordination. When I was a, a young apprentice joiner, it would have taken three or four years, though I didn't finish, but it takes that sort of time. When Hannah, who's just qualified to be a nurse, took her three years of training and training and training, there's a preparation in order to get the qualification. There's a preparation that God has taken us through as a church in order to take us into what he's got for us. And my heart is that every single one of you play your part. No one's excluded. Say yes, Phil. <laughs> no one's excluded. Two and a half hours before the next church come in. We've got plenty of time. Have the children gone? Okay. Teenagers, okay. Uh, young people, children. Um, let me um, give a few quick announcements before we look at God's word. Because I believe what I've got some stuff down here. Um, we'll continue on something on what God is already um, doing this morning. At the back, you'll find a lot of these uh, leaflets. Um, I gave some of these out last week. I need them all to go this morning. So take them with you, invite people to church. I took five to my gym this week. Taking chocolates into the gym is, is it's, um, you'd be surprised how quick they actually go. And I put them in the office and I invited a few people along as I said a word. And you know, if I put five in there and one comes along, I'm happy. If you invite, invite five, if each of us invite five, invite five people and one person comes along, you're already sitting on the back row. When we bought these new chairs when we first came in five years ago, we put them, we bought extra deliberately because we wanted to fill the place right to the back in faith. So we want to encourage you to take these with you and uh, give them out um, to people around and invite them to church. There are some A4 posters. If you want to take them and put them around some place, please take those with you also and pop them up uh, around the place. Okay, next Sunday morning is our nativity service. Um, so um, our children will be taking part in that. It's going to be amazing. And um, so parents, guardians, can you please bring your children here by 9.15 next Sunday morning just to go through the final preparations and all their dress and all their sorts of stuff. 
Um, so if you can please be here. Um, adults, if you're involved in that also, can please be here uh, at 9.15. Um, she's gone upstairs now, isn't she? Um, anything else, please speak to faith, uh, what we need. And uh, we always have a great morning uh, all together in that time. So really looking uh, forward to that. This Wednesday is our last Bible study of the year. We're looking at verse 12. It's taken us from September to the middle of December to go through 12 verses. We've had a great time. Um, I'll send a newsletter out this week. If you weren't able to make Wednesday night and you want the notes for that, um, please send an email through the church email address and I will forward you uh, the notes and you can do some uh, study on your own uh, for that. Also, uh, what else do I need to announce? Um, after the service this morning, you get in the choir together just to have a quick practice um, over the couple of pieces that you've done over the last couple of Thursdays. Also, at the end of the service, we'll set some chairs out around the, the sound desk and if you can stay around and help us, what we want to do is make 100 bags. Um, hopefully we can make 125, but at least 100 bags of food that's going to go down to the school this week. So the bags are here. The food's out in the hall. So at the end of the service, you know, a few people are going to help us do this. Just set everything around those tables, all the beans together, peas together, that sort of thing. And we'll make up the bags and we'll put leaflets in and we'll bless our community. Okay. Exciting, isn't it? So please take those leaflets, take those things out with you um, this morning. Okay, for the rest of us that are here, um, get your Bibles, go with me to Luke chapter 1. Uh, last week I spoke on Joseph and he was no average man. Some of you listened last week. So this morning we're going to look at Mary. So we're going to have some feedback. When I say Mary, Mary, you're going to say, did you know? Okay, so Joseph was Mary, Mary. Now that's a song, I'm not going to break into song, but if nothing else, it will keep you awake. Okay, so we're going to pick up a little, now there's loads more stuff in, in scripture, in the gospel to do with Mary than there is with Joseph, but I want to pull a few things out this morning that just might uh, help us a little bit. So last week we looked at Joseph, his character, his heart, the importance of his role in God's plan. So again, Mary we probably know a little bit more about. But again, I want to look at her character a little bit and the importance of her role in God's plan. So last week, Joseph was, and this morning we're looking at Mary, Mary. Okay, so Luke chapter 1, and let's read from verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pled to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. We looked at that last week, the importance of that. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Again, we touched on that last week, the importance of Joseph. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. You know, God's people say. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her own age. And she is said to be barren, in her, she's said to be barren but she's in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am, your Lord's, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. I find this really, really interesting. Last week, you know, we, we mentioned um, from Luke and talking about the descendants. Um, of, 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 sorry, in, in Matthew that Joseph, the descendant from David, and he was pledged to be married um, to Mary. So this morning, looking at the Dr. Luke, he makes it very, very clear that Mary was a virgin. Now, I know sometimes we don't like to talk about this stuff in church, but this is vitally important. Really, really important that we understand that Mary was a virgin at this time. One commentator said this, Mary as a virgin from whose pure flesh the sinless Christ is formed. In the mind of the previous fathers, the virginity of Mary was a key defense of the truth of the incarnation. The grace of an unstained integrity. It's really important that we understand. Otherwise, there could be argument against, is he really who he says he is? Is then Joseph the father? 
is somebody else the father. It was so important that we understand that Mary was a virgin. But Mary, Mary. <laughs> so Jesus was not born in the traditional manner of union between a man and a woman. Otherwise, he could not be, if he was born in that normal union between a husband and a wife, he would have been born into sin. So she had to be a virgin for the Holy Spirit of God who is sinless. And the purity of a young girl in order for Jesus to be born without sin. Yes? So it's really important. The fact of this, of she was a virgin, is of much important to us. Not only was Jesus born without sin, he lived a sinless life. Talk to me. He lived a sinless life. Otherwise, we couldn't get into Revelation and talk about the pure, spotless Lamb of God. Because when they came to sacrifice in the Old Testament, if the animal had a, a blot or, or a blemish, they would not have sacrificed the animal. True? So again, it was a shadow of things to come. It was the Old Testament understanding that a greater sacrifice was yet to come. The writer to the Hebrews helps us understand this. This once for all sacrifice that was be given, the pure spotless lamb of God. So he was sinless. And only could be born without sin with the, over, with the Holy Spirit overshadowing a virgin called Mary. Still with me? So it's really important that we understand. I know there's other religions pick up on this and that she's highly favored woman. And, and they go a little bit further with it. Still the most important person in scripture is still Jesus. Okay. In verses 26 and 27, Gabriel turns up. And as I was reading through this, I found this really, really interesting. Now, some things I find interesting, you mightn't find interesting. Who turned up to Joseph? An angel? So why then does Gabriel turn up to Mary? The angel that turned up to Joseph is, is, is not given a name. It's just an angel. But the importance of the role that Mary's about to take, God's seen it so important. Now, if you understand angels, there's different ranks of angels. They don't have time to go into all of that. You've got your cherubim, your seraphim, and you've got all these different types of angels. And they have different roles. And you begin to understand. But here, Gabriel turns up because the message and the calling, when you look at the Greek word, for, for the angel turned up to Joseph, and the Greek word with the angel turning up to, um, to Mary, they're different words altogether, so it's not, it's not um, anglios. Um, understand again, it's, it's the importance that Gabriel turns up, and he brings insight and understanding of what's going to happen in the end days. And I think it's really interesting that God chooses Gabriel to speak to Mary, and not just any other angel, because what is now being given this message from Gabriel is a prophetic message that he's going to be called the Son of God. He's going to be the Messiah. He's going to be the Emmanuel. Because the prophetic understanding of Jesus being born was not for him to stay a baby that we've mentioned already, but was to die on the cross and to rise again from the dead. And the prophetic message that was coming through Gabriel was passing here to Mary. I just found it really, really interesting. So when Gabriel turns up, he seems to bring this, this prophetic insight and this revelation. So in verse 28, the angel then said to her, Gabriel says to her, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Greetings are in the, the, the Greek, it says, Hail. It's, 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 there's a strong word, again, that's being used. It's, the word means rejoice. It means be glad. It means rejoice exceedingly. And I prayed that over someone this morning. Who did I pray that over this morning about joy? That there would just, because again, joy is nothing to do with circumstance. Joy is where you get the source of joy from. Talk to me. And there's, not just as Gabriel saying greetings, he's saying rejoice. Before I even tell you good news, rejoice. Why? Because God is God. You just rejoice. Even if you're having a stinker of a day, what do you got to do? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, did I just make that up? Is that in Scripture? 
the responsibility. So Gabriel is saying, rejoice, be glad, rejoice exceedingly. And he says, you are favored. You are favored. And I wanted to know what favored meant. He says, you are, you are, um, you have grace that's going just to be laid upon you. You are thoroughly and carefully graced. You are about to be honored with blessing. I thought, what, what incredible way to start a conversation. You know, have you went into one of your work colleagues who doesn't know God yet? Tomorrow morning. Greetings. Or rejoice. I am highly favored of God. How's your weekend been? You'd probably get a few looks, wouldn't you? You'd probably have a word with the boss. What, what, is there something wrong? But this is how Gabriel is, is turning up. Now remember, when we talk about Mary, Mary is just a teenager. She's not, she's not in her 20s or her 30s. She's a young teenager. In fact, some of the commentators said, you know, they can get married from like the age of 14. A young teenager. I don't know about you, but if an angel turned up to me, I would freak out. Anybody else? And I've seen a few angels over the years and how big they are and how, how beautiful they are and the swords that they carry. And thinking, yes, God, I want to see some more. But beyond that, God, I want to see you. I want to see you. But here's the message that's coming across. So you are not just favored. You are highly favored. Here's honor and here's blessing. And I, and I began to think about this this morning. Do you know what? You're highly favored. I'm just going to speak to you, Liz, because you're the only one kind of nodding your head. Everybody else just seems to look at me like I've got three heads or something. Do you need subtitles? Is my accent okay? You are highly favored. You are highly favored. You have been shown grace beyond measure. Do you know some of you dirty, rotten scoundrels out there? You should die for your sin. Did I say dirty, rotten? It's a bit late now, isn't it? You and I should die for our sin. Because the book says, the Bible, this amazing book says, for the wages of sin is, but, but what? The grace. You have been shown grace beyond measure. You will not be treated as your sins deserve. And some of you have sinned many, many times. Haven't you? Confession's good, let it out. You have been shown so much grace. You have been shown so much blessing upon your life. The fact that you're sat here this morning in this lovely hot room. I don't know, I'm absolutely roasting. I'm about to roll my sleeves out. I, I'm. You have been blessed and blessed and blessed. How many of you are going to have a great big Christmas dinner? Come on, confession is good. Do you know there's... A big majority of the world will not have food on Christmas Day. You're blessed. How many of you came here by car? How many of you went by McDonald's? Just for a coffee. How many of you had breakfast? How many of you drunk my tea on the way in? <laughs> we are blessed. You are highly favored. You are blessed. By God, you have been shown blessings in your life. The psalmist said it in Psalm 90, verse 17. Let the favor or the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. God wants to bless what you work with your hands. And as I was putting this together, who, who has a very practical job that works with their hands? Can you stand to your feet or stand on your hands? Or am I joking? Who else works with their hands? That on a physical sense, if you're not sure, stand to your feet because, you know, you don't want to be lukewarm. You know, just <laughs> get on your feet. Anybody else work with their hands? Yeah, that's working with your hands. If you're on computer. Put it this way. If you didn't have your hands, you couldn't do your job. True? Do you know what? God wants to bless the work of your hands. Why can't you be the best mechanic and fix my car? <laughs> God wants to bless our lives in so many other ways that we don't even imagine. Just hold your hands up. There's something in holding our hands up before God this morning, isn't there? 
I mean, in the prayer meeting this morning, I break off in song. I don't break off in song. God give me the flute so I can't sing and play at the same time. Just, just hold your hands out before God, you guys that are standing. And guys, if you're, if you're around them, you just put your hands on their hands. There's people that are around where they're standing. Just put your hands on their hands. We want to bless your hands this morning. Come on, just, Gary, just stand with her. This one, this one. <laughs> just pray. Just pray over their hands. Pray over their hands. In Jesus' name. That the work of your hands, God said he would bless them. He would bless them. And Father, we take you at your word this morning. Father, bless their hands. Protect their hands. Lord, we think of mechanics and we think of people working with machinery all the time. Father, protect their hands in Jesus' name. But Father, pour out your blessing. And we're not just talking about the blessing that comes from us. We're talking about heavenly blessing, spiritually blessing. Father, pour out your blessing, Father, over, over their hands, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, for your glory and for your honor. Why can't they be the best at what they do? And Father, we pray that over their lives right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So let the favor of the beauty of the Lord be upon us and establish the work of our hands. That you would bring kindness and loveliness and beauty in favor that all you do. Why can't you walk into work tomorrow morning and... I had an amazing weekend. How was yours? We had messy church. I don't know if you noticed, when a few people were starting to hit the floor of this area, I just bust out into laughter. Because if you're trying to put the whole presence of God into this, it doesn't go. Something's got to shake, rattle, and roll. Something's got to move. Something's got to give way. So if God hits me with his presence, I'll take it, but I just might end up on the floor. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because the presence, the power, and the glory of God. That God wants us to bring kindness and loveliness and beauty and favor to all we do. All for the glory of his name. The Psalm 5 verse 12 says, For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. The blessing of God. The, the, the New Living Translation says, it talks about a shield of love. You're protected with a shield of love. Isn't that lovely? That's how he blesses you. So when people throw negative words, I am loved. If you go home today and say the preaching was rubbish, you take it up with him. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved with an everlasting love. Scripture tells me. He just pours extravagant love over us all the time. I am my beloved's and his banner. Did we not mention that last week? And his banner over us is to walk around one of these hats with a banner on top. I am loved. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Let me move on. The promise of God's favor in the shield of protection. In fact, the favor of God can be described as his divine kindness or the act of true compassion and part of God himself towards the needy and the undeserved because we didn't deserve it. In fact, the favor of God can, only be, can also be described as a tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. His kindness, his blessing that's over our lives. And this is the favor that God is pouring over Mary. Not only is, is it being poured over Mary, guess what? The whole world's going to see it, and the whole world's going to hear about it. Because you speak to people out in the street who don't know God, and you mention Mary and Joseph, they'll know who you're talking about. The majority of people will understand. They'll probably know a little bit more about Mary than they will about Joseph. But they'll know that Mary existed. They'll know about Mary, that she carried Jesus. I know we were down in the school last year during Christmas and telling the story. We asked them some questions. The children knew a little bit about the story. Not so much as maybe generations ago, but they were beginning and they understood a little bit more. The whole world's going to see the favor that's upon Mary. But Mary, Mary. So Gabriel speaks. And Mary's troubled. She's a little bit troubled. Maybe this is the first time an angel is showing up and, and, and spoke to her. I wonder would you be troubled if an angel turned up to you and say, Greetings. You 
you're highly favored. The Lord is with you. And you know there's another sentence coming, but you don't know what that is. And many people would be thinking all sorts of stuff. I would. And somewhere in between the writings here, Dr. Luke is, is saying that Mary's troubled. She's, she's not quite sure. It's like someone saying, can I have a word with you, please? I know a few people around here, well, the last few weeks, and I've said to somebody, oh, can I have a word with you? I know what they say to me. Oh, what have I done? If my wife says to my children, I want a word with you, my kids will ask me. If your boss calls you into the office, you're thinking, what have I done? Aren't you? Why do we always think the worst? Maybe your boss is calling you into the office to thank you for all the great work you're doing. <laughs> Why are you all laughing at that? Doesn't that happen to you? <laughs> okay, well, let's change that then. All you guys' hands we've prayed over. Well, the next time the boss calls you in, he's going to say, oh, I love the job that you're doing. Keep it up. Why not? Why not? And she says, I'm a little bit troubled. But Mary is given the news that she will carry the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Messiah, the Emmanuel. She was going to be carrying the Son of God. And as I was in the prayer room this morning, and we were down there and we were praying, I just we began to think a little bit more and pondering this and go through this in my heart and my spirit. And then I had to take my iPad and write this question down. If Mary's carrying the Son of God, what are you carrying? Now, the correct answer is, I'm carrying the Holy Spirit. But if we're all honest, we carry the Holy Spirit and, don't we? Because we might be carrying anxieties, maybe worries, maybe concerns. True? But God doesn't want you to carry those things. Because God doesn't have bad days. God does never get down. God doesn't get depressed. If he's the source of joy, how does he get depressed? He doesn't get depressed. And if Mary is carrying the Son of God, what are we carrying, church? We should be carrying the power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead in our lives. And what we did this morning to the overflowing. If you're overflowing, you can't carry anything else. <laughs> so we got to do what Scripture says. If we're carrying other things than God, we got to cast those things upon Him. Because He cares for you. So you get rid of the worries and the stresses and the strains. And get rid of the depression and everything else. And sometimes the illness that's getting you down. Well, give it all to Him. You're not meant to carry that stuff. That's why two is stronger than one. You get alongside somebody and you pray and you help and pass that stuff on. Don't carry the stuff you're not supposed to. Is that making sense? So I mentioned a few moments ago that women at that time would be married around the age of 14. So Mary is, is probably a teenager. But what else do we know about Mary? Well, she was going to be a mother. She was going to be a good mother. She probably would have been a, a homemaker. She was chosen out of all the women at that time to carry the Son of God. Wow. What a privilege. What an honor. And do you think God chose her because maybe he felt sorry for her? Or do you think God chose her because there was something about her character and her personality. It was something about her relationship with God that she had. There was something about her worship that was attractive to God. You know what? This young girl can carry my son. It's no wonder Gabriel says, you're highly favored. God's seen her heart and her character and her worship. Are you still in Luke chapter 1? Flip over to verse, um, let's read from verse 46. Mary's song. And I was looking at this earlier thinking, could I sing this? And then I thought, no, because I'll empty the church before we're finished. But Mary's song, this is what she's coming out. It says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. We used to sing a chorus like this donkeys years ago. Anybody else remember that? 
But as a young child, I didn't realize, actually, it's, it's Scripture. It's Mary's song that's coming out. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in, in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He, excuse me. <clears throat> He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. She's just a teenager. And here's this incredible song that's coming out of the history that she knows. She's going to have to teach, like we mentioned last week with Joseph, she's going to have to teach the Son of God the Torah. Did anybody learn Leviticus? Three weeks I've been asking. The chocolate's getting out of date now. If you can learn Leviticus from start to finish, box of chocolate's yours. Any uptakers? <laughs> wow, Mary's song. But Mary, Mary, did you know you are pregnant with Jesus? And then... She begins to question what's going on. Let's read verse, um, let's go back into verse 35. Verse 30, 34, how will this be, Mary asked, since I am just a virgin? So the angel asks, or just replies to her, the Holy Spirit will come over you, the power of the Most High, all the way through. And then we get to um, verse 37. I love this. For nothing is impossible with God. Every single word from God has power. Every word. Yes? We go back to creation. Let there be a sun. Is that power? Here's the sun. 10,000 degrees. That's pretty good, isn't it? Many of you like to speak to your turkey and it just be cooked. <laughs> the power of words that makes impossible things possible. Nothing is impossible with God. So whatever you're facing right now, guess what? We serve a God of the possible. Whatever you're facing right now, we face the God of the possible. All things are possible for those who believe, put their faith in God, put their trust in God. All things are possible. Mary knew it. I know it. We know it. But we need to experience it. I wish we had time. I'll bring you all out to the front again. Here's some more power. Here's some more power. Here's some more power. We need the power of God. You receive the Spirit of God. You receive dunamis, dynamite, power of God. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit is not powerless. He's powerful. So when you get the Holy Spirit of your life, guess what? You are power. Let's wrap it up. Verse 38. Out of all these conversations going on, Mary's troubled. How can it be? I'm not so sure. Angel turned up. Gabriel is going to be pregnant. I'm a teenager. What's Joseph going to say? How is that all going to work out? And verse 38, she says this. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. A teenager. What a response to the, one of the greatest callings upon a person's life. What a response. I think that's pretty mature from a teenager. Don't you? I've been doing this job a long time. And I've not heard those words very often. God, whatever you want to do is fine with me. 
wherever you want me to go. And we've, we've prayed that all our lives. God, wherever you want us to go, we'll go. And we've gone. Because to obey is better. Let it be. God, it's, it's all right. Gabriel, it's, it's fine. I, I will do as you ask. I will literally let my body house Jesus. What an incredible response. What a moment of total surrender. And I want to finish with this point. Total surrender. Gabriel turns up. She's a virgin. She's told she's pregnant. How does that work? But she's overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. She's carrying the Messiah. She's carrying the Son of God. But listen to her faith. Listen to her obedience. Listen to her worship. Let it be, God, whatever you want to do. That moment, those talks of total, total surrender. She was willing to serve God. She was willing to pay the price. Because she's going to have to have this conversation with Joe. And Joe was. <laughs> and she's going to have to explain to her parents. And somehow, there might have been some little murmurings going around the community. Because you know what it's like, don't you? <laughs> but she says, you know what? God, whatever it will be, I'm happy with that. I, I'm, I'm totally surrendered. I'm totally surrendered. I'm in. And my last word in my sermon is this. Wow. Total surrender. Father, thank you for these last couple of weeks where we're able to understand a little bit more of the character, the heart, the worship of Joseph and this morning Mary. Two young people that said, I totally surrender. I totally obey. I totally follow. I will totally pay the price. Father, just as we sit in your presence this morning, maybe the challenge for us this morning, God, is if we've not totally surrendered our lives, God, do we need to do that this morning? Is there parts of our lives that aren't totally surrendered? And Father, we can learn from these, these two young people That when you speak, that when you call, that when you instruct, Father, we will follow no matter the cost. Maybe some of these words this morning, church, are, are for you. That between you and God, you just begin to pray where you are and say, God, last night I, I totally surrender myself. I'm not saying an angel's going to turn up and speak to you, oh, that might happen. I am saying that God will speak to you in some sort of way through scripture, through prophetic word, through a vision, through a dream, whatever it may be. Because as we mentioned earlier, the fact that we're here this morning, we know that God's not finished with us yet. And so, Father, would you just gently just talk to us. Father, instruct us that, Father, we would listen, hear, and obey, whatever the cost. Because it's all for your glory, and it's all for your honor. And, Father, may we also learn not just to know about the favor of God upon our lives, but walk in the favor. And just as you've shown us grace, that we will show grace. Just as you've showed us blessing, Father, we will be a blessing. So, Father, as my voice becomes silent, Holy Spirit, continue to work in us, through us. Continue to speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. What a good morning. God is good. And all the time. Wow, that's an old one, isn't it? Let me just remind you of a few things. Choir, we just need you for a little bit at the end. 
if you can stay behind to help us make up these bags, we appreciate it. Give us a few moments to sort all the food around. If you've brought some food this morning, uh, then please just leave it at the back and we'll begin to, to sort that out. Um, there's some tea and coffee and there's some cakes and, and cheese board and all sorts of stuff that's left from the party. And there's some homemade soup. Hang around, have some fellowship together. Um, don't forget what we've got on this week. Uh, Wednesday night, Bible study last one. Thursday night, choir. Uh, you can be here. And then next Sunday morning, if you, your children and those part of Nativity can be here at 9.15, please. Amen? Come on, let's stand as we praise God as we finish. Yeah. 
thank you, God, that you have given us such a living hope, that we have such a hope in your son. And, uh, you know, I really thank you, Lord, that uh, what we've learned from Mary, Mary, did you know, and uh, Joe, no ordinary Joe, how they responded to your call in their lives. And that I pray that we will have the same response to when you call us as well. Amen. <laughs> 